in this lecture i will try and find out uh, the demand function of the utility function which is a cobb douglas utility function now how does a well defined cobb douglas utility function look like so let's say that the utility function that i am talking about that i have at my disposal is u is equal to x y let's see how i'm going to solve for this to begin with i would like you to understand how am i going to go ahead and plot this utility function so let's say that i hold my utility constant at some level let's say that i'm going to hold my utility constant at u is equal to 20 you can take any value not necessarily 20 okay so you know you can plot it for utility is equal to 10 you can plot it for utility is equal to just 4 whatever you want to do but i want to kind of plot it for utility equal to 20 so i go ahead and what i'm going to do right now is make a table for it so you know let's take different values of x and y that fetch me this utility so you know i'm going to take x here and y here when x is 1 y is 20 1 into 20 is 20 right so i want x y equal to 20 right that's what my utility is all about so i want my x y to be equal to 20. Now let's put x is equal to 2. What do I get for y? 10. Let's put x is equal to 4. What do I get for y? 5. x is equal to 5. What do I get for y? 4. x is equal to 10. What do I get for y? 2. x is equal to 20. What do I get for y? 1. So these are my different values of X and Y that I can take. Of course, you can go ahead and take more values than what I have taken. But this is just a general uh, level that I'm going to take. Now, what I'm going to do further is I'm going to go ahead and plot this graphically. So I'm going to take, you know, good X and good Y. So this is my good X on the x-axis. I'm going to take good y here on the y-axis and this is my y-axis. Now when my x is 1, my y is 20. Let's say 20 is here. When my x is 2, my y becomes half which is 10. So let's say you know it's here. When my x is 3, 4, at 4, my y is again half of this. So let's see here, 5. Similarly, supposedly I take 1 here. When this is y is 1, my x is, let's say here, this is 20, something like this. So what I am going to see is some something which looks like a curve like this, right? So this is a typical way that I am going to draw my well-defined preferences. Of course, there are various properties of the well-defined preferences that we have to do. So for example, you know, here, if I say, if I find out the perpendicular by base, which is if I find out the slope of this function here, then, you know, this is uh, the perpendicular is 10 and the base is one, right? So perpendicular by base is 10 by 1, which is 10. For an additional unit of good x, you're willing to give 10 units of good y. You give up 10 units of good y and you get an additional unit of good x. But then slowly when I come to a point like this and here, you know, I had 5 and here, you know, I had 4. So, you know, if I find out perpendicular by base, my perpendicular by base is 1. So for an additional unit of good X, I'm just willing to give up one unit of good Y. And, you know, I know this property of well-defined utility functions that I have diminishing MRS.
but i'm going to hold this thing for the next lecture i don't want to go you know i mean we we want to kind of hold the properties to some other lecture but today i want to kind of do things mathematically in this lecture so now you know <clears throat> once i have gone ahead and i understand that my utility function kind of looks like this you know i have this as my utility function then i also understand that i have to maximize my utility subject to a budget constraint right so i i kind of want to maximize my utility subject to budget constraint and because i want to do that what what do i really want to do is given given the budget that i have so you know given my budget line that i may have given the budget line that i may have i want to kind of find out you know where do i go ahead and maximize my utility and i know that that is actually the point where the tangency condition is satisfied so because i know that this is really the point where my tangency condition is satisfied i further have two ways to solve this problem step 1 or actually method 1 is where i go ahead and i solve using the lagrange this is method 1 okay so i for, form a lagrange system and i kind of try to maximize my utility subject to the budget constraint alternatively step 2 not step 2 actually method 2 please take this as method 1 so alternatively method 2 can be i know what equilibrium condition my lagrange gives me and the equilibrium condition is nothing but the tangency condition and the tangency condition is nothing but where the slope of the budget line equates to the slope of the indifference curve so i kind of do that i equate the slope of the budget line to the slope of the indifference curve which is nothing but i equate px by py to mrs xy i get an equation from here and then i put that equation back in the budget line and i solve for x star y star so these are the two ways for me to kind of find out the equilibrium i'm going to do the first one here so i'm going to begin with solving using lagrange so how do i solve using lagrange i have my objective function that i want to maximize and i what is my objective function i want to maximize my utility i have a constraint in my hand and what's my constraint my constraint is subject to my budget line this is what i kind of want to do now whenever we form lagrange whatever is your constraint that is always followed by a lagrange multiplier as i go ahead i'm going to also talk in detail about what a lagrange multiplier is but for now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and maximize what is my utility xy subject to what is my budget constraint my budget constraint on my budget line is 
the price of x multiplied by the units that I consume of x plus the price of y multiplied by the units that I consume of y. So this is the money or the expenditure that I spend on good x. This is the money that I'm going to spend on good y. This is my total expenditure, my total money that I'm going to spend. And my total expenditure cannot exceed my income. And because I always talk about being on the budget line and never being below the budget line, I have an equal to sign. I, I always spend equal to my income. So this becomes my constraint, budget line constraint that I have. So, so the thing that I really want to do is maximize my utility. My utility is given by x, y subject to px into x plus py into y is equal to m. This is what my Lagrange is all about. This is what actually my optimization problem here is. Now, once I know what my optimization problem is, I kind of want to go ahead and solve for this optimization problem. So I form a Lagrange and I say, I want to maximize X, Y, and I write down Lambda. This is going to be my Lagrange multiplier. What is your Lagrange multiplier, by the way? Lagrange multiplier is very shortly, I'm going to explain you, is going to explain, it explains the effect of exogenous variables. What does this mean? What does it mean that it explains the effect of exogenous variables? See, my utility that I'm trying to maximize, my utility depends on how much I consume good X and how much I consume good Y. Right? So whenever, you know, my consumption of good X increases, my utility will also change. It may increase or decrease. Again, whether it will increase or decrease is something which will depend on the type of good. So assuming X is a normal good, which means I want more of this good. Assuming X is a normal good, as X increases, utility should increase. By how much my utility changes when X changes, that is called marginal utility of good X. Similarly, since my utility function is X into Y, it is also getting impacted by Y, right? So, you know, when my Y increases, assuming Y is a normal code. When Y increases, utility should increase. Now here also, you know, again, different concepts you will learn with time. We have marginal utility increasing and then decreasing. We have diminishing marginal utility law. We have total utility increasing, reaching its maxima, then decreasing. All that is there. But for now, I'm assuming that when my Y changes, my utility changes and how my utility changes when my y changes that is marginal utility of good y but whenever your utility changes due to income now income is exogenous right Income is not determined within the model. Income is determined outside the model. Income is just a constraint that you cannot spend money more than your income. But when my income is increasing, supposedly from tomorrow, I start earning more. 
my utility is definitely going to change because more income means indirectly, I know I'm going to consume more of good X and Y. And that is going to affect my utility for sure. So indirectly, income is affecting my utility. So this is known as marginal utility of income. How income is going to affect the utility. Now, this is given by this Lagrange multiplier. So the Lagrange multiplier really is all about how your exogenous variable you know, exogenous can be income, exogenous can be cost, but how your exogenous variable, variable which is determined outside the model is affecting your utility, is affecting what you're trying to maximize or minimize. That is explained by the Lagrange multiplier. Now, once I have this Lagrange multiplier in place, I'm going to, you know, write my constraint here. Now, one thing which is important before you write the constraint is that whenever you write the constraint inside the Lagrange function, you always kind of follow this rule that, you know, you have to bring in this entire thing, which is the left hand side to this side and then write the Lagrange. So ideally when I'm going to write my Lagrange function here, I'm going to say, or constraint function here, I'm going to say this is M minus PX into X minus PY into Y. This becomes my Lagrange. Now, once I have written my Lagrange, XY plus Lambda M minus px into x minus py into y i will go ahead and optimize this function i will try to uh, you know differentiate the function and find out the optimal values now what are the three variables or factors that are under your control that is something that you can determine. Well, the three variables or factors which are under my control, which are within the model, determined within the model are X, how much quantity of X should be consumed, how much quantity of Y should be consumed such that I maximize my utility and what should be the marginal utility I obtain from income. So because these are three factors or these are the three variables that I want to map, you know, determine within the model, I can only differentiate my model with respect to these three variables. So I'm going to differentiate my Lagrange function with respect to X. And when I differentiate it with respect to X, remember that I hold Y and Lambda constant. I don't change those. So they are held constant. I don't change Y or I don't change Lambda. So you know, Y acts like a constant. This is partial differentiation. So when I differentiate this with respect to X, differentiation of XY with respect to X because Y is a constant is Y. Now, some people get confused, okay? So just if I ask you that I have a function 4X and I ask you to differentiate this function with respect to X, the answer will be 4 because 4 is a constant. Similarly, when I ask you to differentiate XY with respect to X, I'm act taking Y as a constant, just like any number, because this is partial differentiation. So, you know, what I'm going to do is, the differentiation of XY will be Y plus Lambda. You know, income is a constant. So differentiation of income will be zero minus differentiation of PX into X will be PX because PX is a constant. PY is a constant and Y is also a constant. So this entire term is a constant. So this becomes zero and I equate it to zero. Differentiated and equated to zero. That is how you maximize or optimize any function. So, you know, this gives me y is equal to lambda px. This is my equation one. Let's solve further. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to differentiate my function with respect to y. 
and now I'm going to hold x constant and lambda constant. So differentiation of x y will be x because x is a constant plus lambda. Differentiation of m will be zero. Differentiation of p x into x will be zero. Differentiation of p y into y will be p y is equal to zero. So from here, if I solve this, I'm going to get x minus lambda p y is equal to zero, or I'm going to get x is equal to lambda p y. This is equation two. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to differentiate this function with respect to lambda. So when I differentiate it with respect to lambda, I hold x and y constant. So this entire thing is a constant. So its differentiation is zero. Lambda into this entire thing is also a constant. So differentiation of constant, I'm doing right. So now lambda is multiplied by constant. So when four, you know, x was multiplied by a constant, its differentiation was a constant. So when lambda is multiplied by a constant, its differentiation will be that constant. So the differentiation will be m minus px x minus pyy is equal to zero. This gives me m is equal to px into x plus p y into y. This is my equation three. Okay, so I have three equations with me now. The first equation that I have with me is y is equal to lambda p x. The second equation is x is equal to lambda p y. And the third equation is nothing but my budget line. Now, divide equation one by equation two. So my equation one is y is equal to lambda px. My equation two is x is equal to lambda py. I've divided equation one by equation two, and I get y into py is equal to x into px. Now, hold on to this moment, and let's ask ourselves a very important question. What does this equation imply? What is it that you mean by this equation? What is the meaning of this equation? This equation is very, very important. And you know, when I will do other questions, so you know, when I will take, very soon I will do it. But when I will take my utility function as x to the power half, y to the power half, when I will take my utility function as x to the power a, y to the power b. When I will take my utility function as x to the power 0 0.3, y to the power 0 0.7. At each of these points, when you will solve for me and get me the demand functions, we will see how this works, okay? So for now, this equation, see, this is the units of good y that you're going to purchase. multiplied by the price of each unit. So it's like saying that, you know, I'm going to purchase five units of good Y and the value of each unit is 10 rupees. So I'm going to spend 50 rupees on good Y. So this is the money that you spend on good Y. So this is the expenditure. On good Y. Similarly, if I say x into px, then x is the units of good x multiplied by the price of each unit.
So this is going to be the expenditure on good X. So we are saying that at equilibrium, how do I know this is equilibrium? Because this is the equation that I have got by maximizing my utility, by optimizing my utility. This is the equation I got when I optimized with respect to good X. This is the equation I got when I optimized with respect to good Y. So ideally, you know, these two equations are optimizing my consumption of good X and good Y. And that is giving me this final equation because I've just manipulated the two equations to get this. So ideally, this is saying that at equilibrium, the money or the expenditure on good X is same as expenditure on good Y you will end up spending same amount on good X and good Y at equilibrium. Let's name this as equation three. Sorry, equation four. Now it's simple. My equation three was M is equal to PX into X plus PY into Y. But I know that from equation 4, Px into x is equal to Py into y. So from equation 4, Px into x is equal to Py into y. So instead of Py into y, I'm going to write Px into x is equal to m. Or 2Px into x is equal to m. Or x is equal to m by 2px. This is your optima amount of x. Let's solve this further and find out y. So y will be nothing but I know from this equation. x px is equal to y py. So y is px into x by py. So y will be Px into x by Py. So this will be m by 2Py. This will be my y star. So I have got the values of x star and I have got the values of y star. Let's write them down finally. So final equilibrium condition is x star is equal to m by 2px, y star is equal to m by 2py. This is known as the Marshallian demand function. So x star, y star that you have finally got by optimizing by maximizing your utility function subject to the budget constraint, that is known as your Marshallian demand function. How do I show this graphically? So graphically, this means the following. So this is x-axis y-axis this is my budget line and i already have my indifference curve this is good x this is good y this is my optima x star y star x star is m by 2px and y star is m by 2py. So this is the value of x that I should be consuming at optima and this is the value of y that I will consume at my optima.